Hello and welcome to Bio 282 Antibiotics Lab for Online Learning. This video is meant to be paired with additional resources and videos that your instructor has posted on Blackboard, as well as in tandem with the lab manual, Chapter 9. The first thing that you want to do for the antibiotics lab is to inoculate a tube of tryptic soy broth with your unknown microbe and incubate it for 24 hours. This will ensure that you have live and active cultures to work with. Using your TSB tube, you will dip a sterile swab into the tube and then spread it over a sterile TSA plate like Rachel Larson is instructing right now. Notice how Dr. Larson is turning her disc each time a little bit and then re-streaking the swab across it. This is ensuring an even lawn, which is similar to the method that we use for plate count method. Let's look at that from a different angle. So first I'm starting with a tube of sterile swabs and then I'm shaking one out and pulling that one, trying not to contaminate the rest of them. And then I shake up my TSB tube that has culture in it. And I give it a shake a little bit just to break apart some of that growth because you don't wanna accidentally grab one cluster of microbes and then spread it on because that will defeat the purpose of making this an even lawn. So just as Dr. Larson instructed, I'm turning the disc a little bit each time and then I'm re-swiping my swab. So for the next one, I'm making sure to grab a new sterile swab and notice when I dip my swab into the broth this time, on the way out, I kind of wring out the cotton tip a little bit on the edge of the tube. This is because I want to make sure I'm not gonna accidentally drop any culture on my lab bench or on one of the TSA plates on the top. So again, I'm just streaking back and forth with my swab and I'm turning my plate a little bit each time. Next, we want to gather our 18 antibiotic discs and two sterile control discs. So Dr. Larson, Dr. Miller, and Claire are sorting these discs so each microbe has a collection of 18 separate antibiotics. And here I am applying the antibiotic discs in a five-sided dye formation so that means that there are five discs per plate and I'm trying to spread them out apart from each other. This will come in um, of importance later when we're analyzing our plates, but pretty much this formation makes it so I'm not um, grouping them too close so the zone of inhibitions are distinguishable from each other. Once that's done, you're gonna stack your plates and then you put them in the incubator at the optimal temperature that you have previously determined for 24 to 48 hours. Once your plates come out of the incubator, then we need to analyze them, which I have a separate um, thing to show you for that. So when your plates come out of the incubator, they're gonna look like this. They're gonna have some growth on it. So the purpose of this slide here is to show you the diameter of one petri dish that we're using or the TSA plate. So here I just have a standard ruler that has inches on one side and on the other side it's a metric ruler. So these are centimeters. And what I'm showing you here is that the diameter of one plate is 8.5 centimeters. So if we convert that, that means that, one, that the diameter of one plate is 85 millimeters and 3.35 inches. So the reason why we need to know that is because we need to measure our zone of inhibition for each one of our plates. Each group will have four plates, each with five different discs on it, and you will measure 
each one of those zones of inhibitions. So a zone of inhibition is what is shown right here. This halo means that this is a clearing of bacterial growth, so it has inhibited the growth of the bacteria. Each one of your antibiotic discs has a unique code on it. So when you blow up this image, you'll be able to tell what your code is. And each one of you will also have um, a table either in your Google Doc lab notebook if you're in Sharon Mann's class or posted somewhere on Blackboard that will have the name of each antibiotic and their unique code. So we can tell that, the, that this antibiotic probably had a significant effect on the growth of this microbe, whereas this one right here didn't really do much. However, we need to quantify that. So we need to record the actual size of the zone of inhibition, and then we will refer to our lab manual um, in our antibiotic uh, chapter, where it will actually tell us whether or not that antibiotic was um, effective at inhibiting the growth of the bacteria based on whether or not the bacteria was resistant, sensitive, or had an intermediate effect. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna gather some supplies. So you will need one metric ruler. Most rulers, as shown uh, previously, have a metric side and an and a, uh, English side, so inches and centimeters. And then you will need the images of your antibiotic results. If you're in my class, then it will be posted directly in your lab notebook, in your Google lab notebook. And if you're in someone else's class, they'll be posted on Blackboard for you or emailed to you. And then you're gonna need an open Google Slides tab. So the goal of what we're trying to do today is to make this image. So you want to upload uh, one of your images to Google Slides. And when you have that ready, you're gonna click, whoop, didn't mean to do that. There we go. You're gonna click on the image and you're gonna go to Format Options. So in format options, you can actually set the size of your image. So I had cropped my image a little bit. So the black box around the TSA plate um, was right up against on, on the plate. So there was no excess parts here. And then I can set the dimensions of my plate to be um, the diameter as previously established on the first slide. So 8.5 centimeters is equivalent to 3.35 inches. And that's why I have set here is 3.35 uh, inches on both the width and the height and the height. Okay, so the next important step here that you need to not forget, <laughs> otherwise this won't work, is to blow up your screen to 100%. So the reason why we do this is because if you blow it up to 100%, this should be the true size of the image when you have the dimensions set. So if you have your ruler accessible, then I want you to pause real quick and hold up your ruler to your image once you have it ready to go and make sure that your ruler lines up just like this. So you have your zero on one side and then it ends right on 8.5. So if it doesn't do that, then we might need to troubleshoot some stuff. But first, just double check and make sure that you did in fact change the dimensions and you have it blown up to 100%. If you're working in Google, then it should work the same way. So just know that this ruler here is just here to show you um, what I want you to do at home with a physical ruler. So from here on out, you'll actually be using a physical ruler and not this little cartoon. So the last thing that I want to mention to you uh, when you're measuring your zone of inhibition is that not all of your discs are gonna have um, a perfect clearing around them where you can get the entire diameter. So from here to there would be the diameter. A lot of them are actually gonna have only like a partial area like this. Um, because we fit five discs on one plate. 
So what you want to do in this case is to uh, measure from the center of your antibiotic disc out to the clearing, and that is your radius. So radius times 2 equals your diameter. This procedure is also listed in your lab notebook. Okay, so if you have a program like ImageJ or something equivalent um, that will actually give you a scale bar or something fancy, go ahead, use that. I wanted to make this video to be accessible to everyone because everyone should have access to Google. If this method does not work or if you have any questions, please email me.